let's talk about the Green Party because over the last month or so, members of the Green Party have been voting to elect a new leader. They will replace Natalie Bennett, who's standing down after four years in office. The favourite is the Green Party's only MP, Caroline Lucas, of course. She's running on a joint leadership ticket with the perhaps less high-profile Jonathan Bartley. We will all find out the result at the Green Party conference, which takes place in early September. So let's discuss uh, what the future is indeed for the Green Party. Uh, whoever wins that election. Joining me, uh, four members of the party. Adele Ward next to me. Welcome. Good morning. Alex Powell next to Adele and Chris Smith and Imogen Solly. Thank you. You've, I know you've all, you're all very active, so you've all voted. Um, I'm going to start by asking you who you voted for, if you don't mind. Imogen, I'll start with you at the end. Well, to start with our voting system, it wasn't you vote for one person and that's it. We did rank the candidates in order of, course, of preference. Sorry, yes, yes. I did put Caroline Lucas and Jonathan Bartley's joint ticket as my first as preference. Your, as your number one preference, yes, Chris. Yeah, I went for Caroline and Jonathan. I went for Caroline and Jonathan, but I must say, if it, even if it, if it had just been Jonathan, I would have voted for Jonathan. Mm. So well, that's he interesting. He deserves to be higher profile. Uh, it seems like I'm the dissenting voice here. I voted for um, David Malone, but I only felt empowered to do that because our voting system meant that I wouldn't let someone else in and I could still rank uh, Caroline and John as my second preference. Uh, Adele, enlarge on what, on what you said, because um, perhaps, perhaps we're being very unfair, saying, starting off by saying, oh, he's, he's not very well known. Ex explain why you think he would be the right person, albeit that he's running along with, with Caroline Lucas. Yes, I said that because I think it can seem like Caroline's the obvious choice, but um, Jonathan, I've seen at Hustings in the... Uh, he stood to try and be a mayoral candidate. I, he stood in for Sean Berry as a mayoral candidate during the um, London mayoral elections, and he was very good in hustings. I met him at a speed dating event we had at our local party to meet the candidates, and he was I see, very not to meet good. him, just to clarify. <laughs> not just to meet him, no, no, he's married. Yeah, quite clear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I followed him for some time. I think he's very good, and I think it's wonderful that Caroline has you know given him this opportunity because i think he really deserves to be a joint leader okay now now leader. whoever does emerge as the winner in a few weeks time there might be people watching this who think well environmental policies even people who passionately care about the environment they want environmental policies to be talked about by by our political parties they say actually what is the role of the green party now because any party can adopt environmental policies chris uh, and Imogen next you, you've been very active what, what is the point of the Green Party is what some people would say well I think the climate change issue is actually embedded in every problem we've got in the world it's it's the underlying problem which we're going to have to face but I think obviously to appeal to a wider group of people it also touches upon issues of social justice um, and how we fairly divide up what we have in the world so I think the Green Party's core idea of it being a climate change party has shifted but in a very natural way, because the problem is embedded in everything we do. But, but when you say to friends, oh, I, I vote for the, for the Green Party, mm. how many of your friends still say to you, oh, well, that's a wasted vote, because they're, they're such a minority group, they'll, they'll never be in power. What's the point, Chris? Well, I think actually the fact that we're a smaller group means our voice gets heard more, because maybe we stand out a little bit more. And actually, most of our policies have been adopted by people like the Labour Party over the years, like the renationalisation of the railways. So actually, we've started off quite a lot our campaigning about fracking for example put that on the map okay we had to get our mp arrested for to get there <laughs> but actually it did bring it into the mainstream uh, uh, but isn't that part of the the, the point imogen y lots of your part policies have been adopted by by other mainstream parties chris is particularly talking about some of the policies that were adopted by labor and and that is a problem for the party to get to grow and get stronger isn't it i don't think so because every time for instance in the london elections we were co we were coming up with policies there which people people look at and think that actually makes sense it's then harder for the larger parties to ignore those policies the fact that we have been fighting on environmental policies since when, when the party was founded I think is one is one reason why it is not acceptable for major parties not to have environmental policies anymore we don't think their environmental policies go far enough we are still here we are fighting for what we believe is necessary what needs to be done and, and Alex, in fact, you used to be very involved within Labour and now you've moved. That's interesting. Well, Why so? I found Labour were too centrist and I'm not 
particularly wasn't involved early enough to be able to say it was due to Blairism or anything, but I found I moved away from them and I wanted a more radical sort of um, economic agenda. And I have to say, one of the main reasons I'm in the Green Party, I do care very much about the environment, but it's more to do with the economic and social policies. I really, really support things like universal basic income. I think it's essentially, you can't talk about a right to human life, a right to life, without talking about a right to the means to attain life. You need to give people the ability to attain all basic necessities. And we should be supporting policies like universal basic income, as the Green Party does, which allow people to do that. And, and that, that's so interesting, though, because when, when your new leader is chosen, do, do you want that leader to be really a lot more vocal about precisely the sort of thing you've just outlined? Because as I've suggested from the start of our discussion, people still think the Green Party, of course, they care about the environment, but what else? And do you not need a leader now who is really going to highlight precisely what you've well, just said? My, my vote for David Malone was primarily because of his economic focus. I think he is the person who could take us out of this sort of single-issue image, which is it's profoundly untrue, but we've always been portrayed as a single-issue party. And when we, um, David Malone, his focus is on economics. He's written a book um, on, fi on the financial collapse. He writes regularly in a very well-respected financial blog. And his focus being so much on the economy could help us to sort of derail this image that we are a one-issue party. I'm curious whether any of you feel that, that Natalie Bennett perhaps didn't get some of that message across, didn't manage to shift the debate to, to what you're saying, to remind people that, as you say, it's not a single issue party. Would you have liked her to be a little bit more forceful on that score, Imogen? I think it's very difficult to be forceful about your agenda when you have limited, uh, limited exposure as a smaller party. In lo local issues, I found, I found from my local party involvement, we're much more likely to get coverage on, uh, on environmental issues, even when we are also talking about social issues. I did vote for David Malone as second choice because I also believe that is something that's very important for the party. I voted for Caroline Lucas and Jonathan Bartley first because I, I agree with Adele, Jonathan Bartley is a very powerful speaker, so is Caroline Lucas. They're, they're both very good at representing us. And when we've got limited time for someone to represent us, we've got to make sure it's the best possible person. I thought that was the two of them. Very, very quickly, the party got more than a million votes at the last general election, but there's still only one MP, Caroline Lucas. That you can't advance from that without PR, surely. Adele. We absolutely need electoral reform. I think it's not just us who need electoral reform. I think Labour need electoral reform now that they've lost Scotland. And uh, I really would have liked to see Jeremy Corbyn and, and Owen Smith saying that they would bring in electoral reform All right. for well, that. On that note, we must leave it there, but thank you very, very much. Uh, and we'll find out in September. Alex, Adele, Chris and Imogen, thank you very much. In